so that's a, that's a great segue into our kind of our micro course section of things, okay. because I mean, you, you said, well, I can get up, I can, I can, you know, get up at seven 30. I can start work at 10. I, I can cut out about two, have lunch. I can work a little bit later. I'm, I'm not working Mondays. I'm not working this. So it sounds like to me that, that, I mean, you're certainly not lazy and you're certainly not an underachiever, but you've got to do something to kind of, kind of, you know, offset, you know, these blocks of time that you've kind of checked out and you said, I'm not going to do these things during these times. So how do you, how do you manage that time? I would love for you to kind of expand on that as part of our, our, you know, rising tide micro course section. Yeah. So I'm going to share my screen with you. Um, and this is, <clears throat> so a lot of times there's, and this is two different things that I'm going to show. And that is, okay, can you see that? Yeah. Okay. You're going to have so to watch it on is, YouTube, guys, then, if you're listening to the podcast. <laughs> so this is my goals. So that's how I broke down in three months time, right? Because I said I, I plan quarterly mm -hmm. my goals. And so for me, it was important to have a health goal, a soul goal, a mind goal, a business goal, a cultural goal, family, passion, projects, financial an arm was something that I had an arm injury and I was working through that. So it's, I say, you know, lay out those things that are your goals, right? So if you don't work towards something, like even if it's five minutes a day, you're not going to develop it. So health was, you know, I wanted to get back into running. Soul was meditating. Um, mind was reading a book a month. I'm not a reader. Most CEOs read between like 50 and 60 books a year. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to make it a goal. And once, you know, after three months, it becomes a habit. And so that's also why I did it that way, that if I can meet my goals every you know week for those three months, it de I develop a habit and then I can go and develop a new one that's going to benefit me in my business. Um, so then, you know, the next couple of three months I had, you know, um, strategic, uh, alliances for productions and then cultural, I had a new language in there and then, you know, flying back to see my family a couple times a year. So those were like my overall goals. And then really I laid them out. I think this was my personal schedule. I, so here's the other thing that I want to highlight on this. So many times people have goals and it's like, I want to make a million dollars. It's great. That's a, that's a doable goal guys and girls and ladies. Um, but when you say, or I want to make, you know, six figures, I want to make a hundred thousand dollars. It's doable, but if you wake up in the morning and you're like, today I have to make $100,000, that's really intimidating. Mm -hmm. So people lose all their motivation to try to meet that goal, right? But when you break it down into bite-sized chunks, that's when it becomes doable. That's when you're motivated to do that. So if you take, for example, the $100,000, that's about $8,000 a month. And so if you wake up and you're like, oh, I have to just make $8,000 this month. If you break that down again, I only have to make $2,000 this week. Does right. that feel better, right? Than waking up right. and saying, I have to make a hundred grand. So then, you know what, little by little, you're building on that. And at the end of the year, you've made your hundred grand, right? Yep. Yep. A million, you know? So that's why I chunk it out this way. And then this was a, a, an old schedule that I kind of played around with. It's not done. So I'll show you one of my friends. I deleted his name, so it's okay. <laughs> I made his schedule, right? And so time blocking is something that is really used now and people talk a lot about, mm -hmm. and it's just essentially blocking out a portion of time to do anything. So it's right. no longer like minute to minute, if not like chunk of half an hour or an hour. Yeah. So his schedule was um, wake up. He wanted to wake up at 6.30. His morning routine was an hour. And then he was helping his other friend develop some work. So he blocked out two hours for that, two hours for client emails, an hour, 30 minutes for lunch, um, two to four for lead generation for his business. And then five to about 930, which is a really decent chunk was just partnership outreach, which mm -hmm. was, you know, strategic partnerships. And then he would do his bedtime routine, which is really important. So many people talk about morning routine, but no one really talks about bedtime routine. So just speaking into that a little bit, um, that really helps you get ready for bed. It gives you something to look forward before, to before bedtime. Um, and it really helps you unwind because how many people Netflix before bed? 
yeah. right? And that blue light is bad for us and all of these things. So if your bedtime routine is reading maybe before bed, I had one where I just, you know, after a certain amount of time, I don't do it anymore. I need to get back into it. So it's a great reminder. All the lights were out, like all of the white lights were out and I would just have either candles or warm LEDs on mm -hmm. only a couple. And so yeah. soft lighting, which would start to make me sleepy. And then I would sit there and meditate and listen to like spa music for 30 minutes, getting yeah. ready for bed. And that really helps you unwind, decompress, and then really be able to, as soon as you hit the pillow, go to sleep because sleep is key. <laughs> so his next day was a little bit different. He did his morning routine. He woke up, he did social media engagement for his company. Again, client emails, lunch, marketing, help with his friend, admin time. So again, putting in that admin time mm -hmm. is super important. Right. Partner outreach. Um, the next day looks really similar. And then he just had new skill building. Um, video layout was on Fridays. Planning for the week, that's really crucial. So that was Saturday. And then Sunday, he had his free flow time. Oh, and he did meal prepping as well. So all of this allowed him to kind of flow within that structure because people always, you know, want to step out of that nine to five and just go into complete anarchy because sure. they've been told what to do. So you can make it to where it benefits you. So if you don't like waking up early, don't wake up at six o'clock, wake up at nine, right? wake up at seven. Like what time serves you? I know that I am not able to communicate and be effective and efficient and be present for my clients and my team until 10 a.m. So I don't put anything on the books before 10 a.m. And when people ask me, I don't tell them, oh, because I'm sleeping in. It's like, I have a meeting. I'm booked until 10. Yep. I have openings yep. after 10 a.m., right? right? Schedule's not until then, yeah. Yeah. And so that's really, you know, an effective way of, you know, making sure that you plan out your weekend. So this is just really time blocking. It's not an item per item, but then he fills them in, right? So he'll have his top five client emails that he needs to send or the top social media engagement right. or developing content. Um, and so that's what you can do early morning during your morning meditation and getting prepared is writing out those three things. I've heard from a lot of like business gurus and masters, like more than three things, anything over three is like yeah. a, a perk, right? But just focus on three. And, you know, we're used to this nine to five work schedule when really people are maybe efficient for max six hours of that time in the nine to five world. So, you know, being able to do three things really well, like if that's developing your content plan for the month, that's huge. That's one, but that's huge. Right. And like not beating yourself up. There are going to be days where you do 10. Like I had a day the other day, I knocked off like 15 things off my list. And I was like, Oh my gosh, this is amazing. And then the next day I wrote like another 15 things on my list. And I was like, okay, as long as I get five done, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be good. And I got like six done. So, you know, putting those key things and also being able to determine what are going to be big needle movers in your business. So that's something, um, one of my friends, her mentors taught her this, which was if you're bad at time management, right? Which if you're listening to this and you've stayed on this whole time, thank you. <laughs> and um, it was writing everything down that you did, right? So I went into Facebook from five to 5.30, right? Then it also makes you not only think about what is it really worth doing? Is it worth just like writing on the piece of paper that I checked my phone? And then at the end of the day, you do it for like two or three days, highlight in green what is actually money generating items. Because so many times we get so caught up in admin and answering emails and this kind of stuff, and we're not actually bringing in money. So if you don't bring in money, you can't pay yourself. You can't pay a team. You can't scale, right? So really looking, because then you can look and be like, wow, I spent eight hours on emails, social media, and I didn't do one single income generating item. I need to modify, right? I um, installed, there's an Instagram. That is my kryptonite. I love, I'm very visual and creative, so I love pictures. I installed a timer as soon as I'm on, and I run three companies on Instagram sometimes. Um, when my Instagram timer goes off after 10 minutes, it goes off and I'm supposed to put my phone down. Yeah, sometimes, you know, no one's perfect. <laughs> But it's a good reminder, right? Newsfeed Eradicator, if your company is on Facebook, that's been life-changing for me. Newsfeed Eradicator is a plugin for Chrome that you can use. It's completely free, um, and it takes away your feed. 
So you no longer do that endless scrolling that happens on Facebook yeah. because who yeah. has ever opened up Facebook and 30 minutes later, you're like looking at cats. Absolutely. And you're like, yeah. oh my gosh, right? So I have to go in there and post and check on what my team is doing and answer questions for the conference. And, you know, we do a little bit of lead gen through there. So I need to be on Facebook. It's part of our business. A lot of people coaching coaches, that's part of your business. So Newsfeed Eradicator is a great tool you're in and you're out, right? That saves me four hours a day. And so now I can put my attention on like strategic partnerships or marketing things or things that are actually going to make me revenue because I have a team to pay for. Right. 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 And I have my own bills to pay. Yeah. Right. So that's going to keep me in business longer than just going down this mindless like spiral.